Hi there, and welcome to another episode of Haltex Technically Speaking. Today, we're going to be delving into the topic that is launch control. What is it, and how does it work? Before we get into the specifics of things, we've got to understand what the problem is that we're trying to solve. In order for a car to launch consistently, we need the engine RPM, the throttle position, and the manifold pressure to be in a state that makes exactly the right amount of power in order for the car to take off as quickly and as consistently as possible every single time. We also need to be able to alter this launch power depending on the racing surface and the track conditions. So let's go through a few common scenarios and explain what's actually happening in order to get the car to take off. The most basic form of launch control is the auxiliary rev limiter. When the clutch or brake pedal's depressed or the trans brake's active, a secondary engine rev limiter is activated and the engine can't rev past this value. So let's use say 5,000 RPM for example. The engine will react exactly the same as it would normally. So same fueling, same ignition timing, same boost pressure, except the rev limiter that's normally at say 9,000 RPM is now at 5,000. You've got the option of cutting fuel, ignition, or both in order to achieve a consistent launch RPM, as well as the option of a hard cut, soft cut, or cut off rev limiter. These allow us to change the sound and speed of the rev limit noise from smooth and relatively sort of quiet to aggressive and wild. So this limit allows the driver to hold the throttle flat and the engine will bounce off the lower rev limit in order to launch consistently. Uh, the Mitsubishi Evo 789 family actually have this as a factory option. Put your foot on the clutch, it's got a rev limit of 5500 RPM and that's the perfect Evo launch RPM. Now building on this strategy, we can look at the launch control function. Similar to the auxiliary rev limiter, but with a little more functionality. This feature controls the launch rev limit, but allows us to map the limit versus a 3D table looking at throttle position and boost pressure for example. But you can choose any table axes. This allows the driver to have a higher launch RPM at 50% throttle and low boost, thus inducing more exhaust flow, resulting in more boost pressure, resulting in more power. But when the desired boost pressure is achieved, the driver can go to full throttle, which will drop the engine RPM to the mapped out launch RPM, and you're ready to go. The same method of mapping the launch RPM versus throttle position can also help tame fire breathing drag cars when trying to bring them into the staging beams, reduce engine wear as much as possible and confuse your competitor when the RPM limit keeps changing depending on the racer's right foot. The launch control function also allows us to make fueling and ignition changes while the function's active. Typically, a little more fuel will be added in order to assist with in-cylinder temperatures, but the ignition timing is a little more tricky. If the engine's turbocharged and equipped with a clutch, then you'd want to massively retard the ignition timing so the spark events occurring after top dead center, sometimes up to 20 degrees or more. Firing the ignition event this late means the exhaust valve will be open or, or just about to open, and all that energy goes straight into the turbocharger's exhaust housing and spools the turbocharger up. Once the engine's making boost pressure, because it's loaded against the retarded ignition timing, it's then making power. With this power, it can make more power, and finally get to the desired launch RPM and boost pressure. But without loading the engine against the retarded ignition timing, it wouldn't ever get there. This method is sometimes referred to as launch anti-lag. However, with this method, there's no exhaust manifold air injection like you have with rally style anti-lag. If the engine's bolted to a torque converter, then we need to tackle it a little bit differently. The engine already has something to load against, the torque converter. 
So retarding the ignition time will only hurt engine power and even further stop the engine from coming on boost. The best bet is to apply the trans brake or foot brake, then full throttle. If the engine reaches the desired launch RPM and manifold pressure, then things are good. If it doesn't, we might need to try adding ignition timing to try and increase engine power in this area. However, the ignition map should already be tuned in this area to make the most engine power possible, so this action's often fruitless. If you've still got no luck, you might want to increase the engine's down low power using nitrous and the Elite's advanced nitrous control strategy. We could add a dry nitrous fogger, which should be activated only when the trans brake input's active and when the engine's below the launch RPM. All the same safeties are used, like the engine needs to be over a pre-programmed coolant temperature, between chosen manifold pressures and over a certain throttle position. Then the ECU would trigger the nitrous solenoid and apply the desired ignition retard depending on how much nitrous is being used. If it still doesn't come up, you could either add more nitrous or change to a slippery out torque converter, but it's going to be a lot of work. You could tie any of the launch RPM methods together to create a kind of three step style strategy where the first step is a burnout limit, while the second step is the launch limit, and then finally the third step is the engine's main RPM limiter. But now that you've seen how many options are available, you can see that it's not really just three steps. Each limit has its own flexibility resulting in different limits for different situations resulting in different outcomes. Each of these are programmed by the tuner to get the perfect launch from your car each and every time. So whether you're a pro or a weekend racer, now that you know a little bit more about launch control, why don't you give it a crack setting up on your own car. As always, thanks very much for watching. My name's Scott, see you next time.